I'm about to show you the craziest game of chess you've ever seen, okay? Give me 10 minutes of your time, I promise I'll deliver. This happened between Fabiano Caruana and Timur Ajabov, Chessable Masters, day four, second to last round. Let's get into it. So we have a King's Indian defense, and Fabiano goes for this h3 castles knight ge2 variation. As early as move eight, we reach a position that has never been reached before in a King's Indian, which is already insane. Because the King's Indian has hundreds of thousands of games, if not millions, if you don't count the ones that are played in the database. Knight d7, castles in b5 and e5. So Timur is looking for breaks, right? He's looking for pawn breaks in the center and on the queen side while his development is still getting underway. Fabiano's got this kind of unique setup. Normally that g3 knight is uh, standing on f3, but already very unique territory. The first trade occurs on move 11-12. It fixes the central structure. And Fabiano will begin to target these queenside pawns to try to uh, accelerate his development on the queenside. Whereas the guy who's playing the King's Indian defense is going to be looking to make an f5 pawn break. Okay? All of these things are going to occur. Generally, in, in, a, in a traditional King's Indian style, uh, white attacks the queenside, black attacks on the king side, and we'll see what happens. It's not too crazy just yet, but watch. So knight c5, bishop c2, knight e8. Preparing this f5 move, and now Fabiano stops it by not even addressing it. He plays b4. So obviously the knight is hanging, you can't play it anymore. Knight d7 now blocks the bishop. So he plays a4. As I said, he's going to try to use pawn breaks on the queen side to accelerate his development. Takes, takes, and after rook b8, b5, accelerating further, knight c5 comes back. Now he doesn't want to make this trade, although it kind of looks appealing because you get a pass pawn, uh, because his dark squared bishop is frankly very strong. Uh, and in, in allowing this capture, he'll allow black to plant the knight on that square once the pawn takes back on c5. So Fabiano instead again continues to focus on that side of the board. As far as even trading off his bishop, knight c5, rook takes, and there's nowhere very convenient to put this bishop, so Rajava brings it back to c8. The, of course, the idea, of course, not being to reset the board for the next game, but to focus on that break f5. Fabiano now has no way to stop it and plays rook a7. He understands that f5 is coming, and he wants to have a dominant rook on the 7th rank. f5. Now, you should not be allowing this, because then you would first of all lose a piece, but let's say that wasn't even the case, you're just allowing black very rapid kingside play. So what Fabi does is he takes first. Now black, to continue his initiative, needs to play pawn takes f5, and he's got this. But this pawn used to cover the h5 square, and Fabiano immediately takes advantage of that, looking to trade off the very powerful uh, King's Indian bishop. Now, of course, uh, well, since it's protected, Timur would just continue with his initiative here, right? No, he plays bishop h8. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just say something. This is the craziest position I've ever seen. I've been playing chess for almost 20 years. I've probably played close to half a million chess games. This is insane. Black has all the pieces on the back rank. It looks like he's playing chess 960, except not really, uh, because I guess the king would need to be between the rooks, but we can just say that he already castled. And yet, the evaluation of this position is slightly better for black. What? So Fabiano plays queen f3, f4, bishop back, and now Timur says, uh, buddy, my king is wide open, but I'm actually the one attacking. His bishop is lined up, his queen's lined up, his knight's about to join the party, and watch how Timur assembles all his forces. Knight g3, now this can't be taken because of the pin. Queen g6, knight e4. Knight g7. Now Fabiano continues to focus on the queen side. h5, king h2, knight f5. So we see Timur in beautiful King's Indian fashion coordinating his pieces, sets up long-term attacks. We see knight h4 is probably coming in a second, so he needs to play queen d3 to get out of the way of this move, otherwise that would have been devastating. Now bishop g7, and Fabiano says, you know what, I actually don't think I have anything on the queen side. Let me go back to g1, and maybe I'm going to set up g3 and open up my own counterattack. Nope, Timur shuts that right down with the move h4, and these pawns lock down the g3 square. Keep an eye on that g3 square, because we're going to get some really exciting stuff there in a moment. Knight e2, bringing the knight back to defend, and now rook b7. So what does this move and this move have, have to do with each other? Well, rook b7 is offering a trade... Uh, of white's most active piece. That rook on a7 is the only real menace 
that is in the position. And for good reason, Fabiano plays rook a8, continues to put pressure on the black position. But this move and this move have to do with attacking the king. How? Because when this trade does not occur, the rook now transfers itself over to double up on the f-file, okay? That's how those two moves are related. It just shows the beauty and really the cohesiveness of the position in a, in a pure King's Indian defense fashion. So bishop b4, Fabiano focuses on the one weakness in black's position, queen h6, which we'll see why this move even happened in a second. Rook c1 to hit the bishop. The bishop has to move. Rook a6 to stockpile pressure. It looks like white is... Uh, wh there's no way to defend that. I mean, it looks like white is about to break through. Not so fast. F3. The door is opened. The knight is hit. The pawn is hit. The rook is, is, is in the queen's sights. Fabiano needs to respond to this move by playing bishop d2. Counterattacking the queen. You know what he should have played according to the computer? Absolute insanity is what he should have played. G takes f3. Knight d4. Opening up the rooks. Rook takes d6 anyway. Rook takes f3. Rook takes queen. Rook takes queen. This is hanging. This is hanging. That's hanging. Bishop f8. King takes. Rook d6 hitting the bishop. Knight takes knight. Rook c2. Two pieces hanging in the position. Rook h3 from black. King g2. And knight f4 check. And in this position after king g1. Black plays the very very um king to e8 defending the bishop and supposedly the position is in the balance after bishop d2 queen h5 g takes f3 remember i told you to keep an eye on that square yeah knight g3 and taking this would be way too dangerous because that would open up a check and the queen and the bishop would roll in on h3 and white would be in huge trouble so fabi in a time trouble finds the only move that holds it holds h3, it holds f3. Timur has been stopped. Nope. No, he hasn't. Rook takes f3. Anyway, the attack is still in full force. Knight takes, rook takes, check and block. And in this position, the queen is hanging. But it's kind of hard to take it, because that rook is also covering the f6 square, and that would be a knight fork of the king and the queen. So it's kind of a fake threat, if you will. Uh, and this queen needs to maintain defense of the rook at all times. In this position, again, m m Mr. Beep Beep Boop gives this. Takes, takes, check here, takes, takes on d2, and bishop h3, and the position again, chaotic, but still in the balance. But Fabiano plays bishop h6, which is not a bad move, because obviously this would still be hanging, and then you would add the queen to the attack. But after... Knight takes e4, he blunders. He blunders in astounding fashion. Here, he apparently was supposed to take, take, and then play rook g1, but he, misses up, he, 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 he mixes up his move order. He plays rook g1 first, which allows the black king to go to h7, and all of a sudden, all of black's pieces are correctly set up, because even though you can take with check, Bishop f5 comes, and uh-oh, the queen is hit, and so is this. And how are you going to stop mate? Well, Fabiano thought for a while here and chose to sacrifice his queen. If he had, let's say, moved his queen, I don't know, uh, there, then after check, here, check, here, there is mate. You're just mated. So he decides to sacrifice his queen. Check. King g2 takes here. And now, the moment of truth. What queen check do you give white? And what is the difference between the two of them? You can pause the video, try to decide for yourself. Let me tell you, Timur chose incorrectly. The correct one is queen f3, which in many ways is far more natural. If king h2, then obviously you take, and you're just winning here. First of all, if king h3, you have bishop f5, but you can also just take the rook. The other thing about queen f3 is if the king takes the pawn, you take, you fork these, but here there is one brilliant variation which might have been overlooked. Rook g3, you give a check. Now, the, the rook cannot block because queen f4 would be devastating. So king g4, and really this is just an absolutely astounding 
solution to this position. It's a checkmate net. You don't continue to check the king. You take away the king's only escape square by playing the absolutely beautiful king g6. There is no check to be given to this king. The rook can't check him. This rook can't check him. And bishop f5 is just an unavoidable... It's just an unavoidable fate. You, uh, excuse me, not bishop f5. Uh, bishop f5 yeah, in, in a specific circumstance, but mostly queen h5 is the threat. Um, and then you would just be taking away all the squares from the king. So, ouch. Ouch. But in the game, Rajabov played queen f5. And after rook g4, the final saving move from Fabiano. You cannot play a move like bishop f3 because after rook a7, it's perpetual. It's perpetual. The king can't escape. Check. If king moves, you go back. And if this, then actually you lose because of rook f8, uh, rook a8. And if king f7, rook f8. Unbelievable. Just simply, un I told you this is the craziest game maybe ever. And after king h4, now the difference is the king gets away and there is no king g6. And the player's repeated moves, queen f5, king h4, queen f2 check. I don't really know what much, what much else I can say about this game. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you think this is the craziest game that you've ever seen. Let me know if you have a better one. But I had to share this game with you guys. Unbelievable stuff. The King's Indian is an insane opening. And it brings just absolutely beautiful attacking chess on two sides of the board. And leads to just, just marvelous chaos. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the live commentary. Today is the rest day, but it will resume tomorrow myself and Women's Grandmaster Chiyujo over on uh, our Twitch channels. Take care.